Welcome to SVG TV's news for Friday, September 23rd, 2022. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. Leader of the Opposition, the New Democratic Party, Honorable Dr. Godwin Friday, is calling on the country's government to make the education of the nation's children relevant for the 21st century. In a television address to the nation on Wednesday, September 21st, Dr. Friday said the current curriculum must be revamped to cater to the diverse needs of students. According to Dr. Friday, the current curriculum does not adequately prepare all students for life. I am calling for a comprehensive review of our curriculum at all levels to ensure it supports, challenges, and prepares our children for the future. For too long, our education system has focused on traditional academic programs that culminate with CSEC, CAPE, and a university degree. Our schools should also be equipped to provide and assess students in skills and technical aptitudes needed for jobs and our economic development. The Caribbean Vocational Qualification, CVQ, is part of the process of achieving certified skill workers promoted by the CARICOM single market and economy. Dr. Friday said the country also needs to focus on more skills training for the young people. He stressed that there are not enough trained skilled people in the country, a situation that he says must be turned around. The opposition leader offered his recommendations to solve this issue. Medical and vocational education is well integrated into the education system so that every child has the opportunity for a comprehensive education. Two, ensure competency-based curricula linked to the CVQ framework in all secondary schools and other suitable settings in the workplace and the wider community. And three, establish a qualification framework that enables learners to move seamlessly between academic and vocational qualifications in formal and less formal education settings. Also, we must revamp and expand the YES program to provide opportunity for on-the-job training while earning a living wage. Further, increase opportunities for skills development and lifelong learning through vigorous and well-managed continuing education programs. I'm a big supporter of such programs. In addition to technical and vocational programs, we must teach agriculture in all primary and secondary schools. We are, after all, an agricultural nation. Further, to develop the whole person, the whole child, and promote our culture, music, art, dance, and other forms of cultural expression must be regarded not merely as optional courses but as essential components of a modern education. Dr. Friday added that programs need to be implemented that would engage and motivate students to complete secondary school. This, he said, requires a real plan to deliver for the children, parents, and teachers. He said it is not only about how you teach, but what you teach. The new technologies used in online learning during the pandemic have opened our eyes to promising possibilities. Let us embrace them and integrate them permanently into the way we teach and learn. Giving a child a laptop is not the fulfillment of that objective, but merely the beginning of it. This also requires reliable high-speed internet service in all schools and in fact in every home high-speed internet is no longer an optional luxury but a necessary part of education we must upgrade teacher training 
to make effective use of information technology in everyday teaching. The now familiar platforms and techniques of online learning should not be abandoned just because we have returned to the traditional classroom. Let them be our new normal. Minister of Education, the Honorable Curtis King, has said that there are several existing gaps in the education system that needs to be addressed, especially numeracy. Speaking on radio last night, the minister said that CSEC mathematic results, with the exception of the 2020 and 2021, only once has there been an average of 50%. Minister King noted that this year has seen a significant decrease in the mathematics with 26%. I look back at our stats from in 2010 or 2014, I think 2010 right up. And with the exception of 2021 and 2020, there was only one other time, Jules, that we had a pass rate of over 50 percent in our mathematics one so leave out the, the the 2021 and 2020 years when we had one paper only one on one occasion before that we scored 50 percent math and this year um the decline was significant because last year, I mean, 2019, sorry, it was 33% wrong, and this year it's 26. According to the minister, officials at the ministry are of the view that there might be something that is not being done right as it relates to the teaching and preparation of students in mathematics. He said this school year, the ministry will do its best to identify and alleviate the problem. The education minister further added that to be successful in the transformation of the society and the economy, education plays a significant role and mathematics is one of the most important subjects in this regard. And I know people are going to say, well, maths is a poor subject throughout the region. And throughout, and plenty international countries too. But we can't take solace, comfort in that. We have to find out what is the problem and seek to alleviate that problem by making targeted intervention. And I give this example as maths because I think maths is, is quite significant. And for another reason, we have been stating over and over and our trust as you can see we are moving more and more towards the promotion of stem education huh? science technology engineering mathematics and if we are going to be successful in the transformation of our society in the transformation of our economy Education, as we have said, has to play a significant role. Following what has been described as very cordial and good-spirited negotiations between the labor unions and the government, this country's Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, the Honorable Canola Gonzalez, is asking the unions to bring that same spirit of cooperation as they tackle the very important issue of pension reform. Speaking at a press conference at Cabinet's room yesterday, Minister Gonzalez said the existing pension reform structures are not sustainable in the long run and would have to be adjusted. However, he pointed out that he does not want the adjustments to be disadvantageous to anyone. But we don't want to adjust them in any way that is unilateral, in any way that is um, disadvantageous to existing workers. And so we want to have a conversation that focuses on the reality of the sustainability of our pension system and what has to be done. And, and I hope that, the, the, that this particular consultation, as quick and as honest and as um, successful as it was, can be a model 
by which we also discuss the issue of pension reform. Now, pension reform is going to be a discussion wider than the unions. We're going to have to have consultations um, with many, many other interest groups. But the unions obviously play a very important part in those consultations, and I'm, I'm inviting them to keep the good vibes flowing. And, and let's see if we can also um, bail that cat and tackle that very important issue. This country's healthcare sector will benefit from a form of injections of funds made possible through a loan from the Caribbean Development Bank. The Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB, has approved a loan of approximately U.S. $4.4 million for the government to improve the capacity of the country's health sector to respond to the ongoing effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and improve resilience of the healthcare sector to respond to health and other emergencies. In a release issued by the bank, the CDB Vice President of Operations, Mr. Isaac Solomon, said that in addition to the effects of COVID-19 in recent times, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has also had to grapple with the eruption of La Sufra Volcano and the impact of Hurricane Elsa, which have severely strained healthcare systems. The assistance from the CDB will support the government's ongoing health care management response and help to minimize the adverse impacts of the pandemic and other emergencies on the population's health. Over the last two years, the health delivery systems in SVG have been overburdened, particularly during spikes in COVID-19 infections, which tested the capacity of personnel, equipment, facilities, and other resources. CDB's support will improve the COVID-19 surveillance, case detection, and monitoring increases in the capacity of response teams, uh, argue, augment health inf information systems and improve the delivery of critical care. The project loan is being allocated from a U.S. $50 million loan facility provided by the Inter-American Development Bank to support COVID-19 response projects in the organization of Eastern Caribbean states, the OECS member countries. <laughs> Coming on the heels of successful negotiations and a subsequent agreement to raise salaries by 7% over, th over three years for public workers, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is setting its sights on the minimum wage in this country. Speaking at yesterday's press conference, Minister of Finance Camilla Gonzalez said Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez was concerned that none of the unions during the recently concluded negotiations brought up the issue of the minimum wage for persons working in the retail sector, construction workers and domestic workers, to name some. According to the Minister, Cabinet has since given approval for the Wages Council to convene before the end of the year. Of selecting the, the, the chairperson for the Wages Council and we hope that after that process um, it will it will re it will result in uh, an increase in the minimum wage um, for workers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Ministry of Education and National Reconciliation in collaboration with the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, has launched a special education needs SEN campaign aimed at supporting students with special needs across the country. The campaign dubbed Special Delivery is intended to promote inclusivity and highlight the attention that students with special education needs require. It involves the delivery of critical messages using various media and execution of a Special Education Needs Survey, otherwise known as a SEND Survey. The overreaching goal of the SEND survey is to increase accessibility and reduce disparity for students with special education needs and disabilities in St. Vincent and the Grenadines so that every learner, success, so that every learner succeeds. It is being administered as part of the OECS Program for Educational Advancement and Relevant Learning, PEARL, a four-year program that seeks to advance progress towards the goals of the OECS Education Sector Strategy through increased access and improved student learning in basic education. The special delivery campaign is being implemented over a 25-day period from Thursday, 22nd of September to October 16, 2022. 
Local trade unions currently involved in a court case against the government are confident that they will gain a victory. The Teachers Union, a Public Service Union and Police Welfare Association are suing the government over the COVID-19 mandate which resulted in hundreds of workers losing their jobs last December. Speaking at a recent press conference, two of the public sector unions suing the government expressed confidence in winning the court case scheduled to be heard on November 29th and December 1st. However, they noted if the government appeals, they will engage in prolonged industrial actions. Recently, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves urging dismissed workers to reapply for employment said that regardless of how the court rules, the matter is likely to end up at the Court of Appeal or the London-based Privy Council, the nation's highest court. The membership to seek that. And we're not going to lose. We're going to win. Uh. But definitely we know we're going to win. We're not going to lose. We're going to, lose. We're going to win, but if the government, if the government appeals... Because that's what the Prime Minister is saying. We know we're going to win. That's why he's putting out these things. But because he's preempting, he's going to lose. That's why he's saying he will appeal. He don't know he's going to lose. Yeah. You understand? But when he appeals, there's a price within a democratic state. So we'll go to the membership and seek a mandate. And this mandate would be within the confines of the law. Teachers, they are... <laughs> Over 80 other public servants have been dismissed, including the nurses. Over 80 other public servants, besides okay. teachers. Um, once the unions win this case and the government decides to appeal, there will be industrial action. And we'll try and prolong it as long as possible. You have an election coming up in 2025. <laughs> Let the unions win this and you appeal, and you'll see what happens. Simple as that. When the court, that's the confidence that, that we have. No right-thinking government who thinks about their longevity <laughs> will attempt to appeal it. Ralph Gonzalez is on his way out. The people who have to be frightened about all of this eh, is those who remain. And trust me, the damage has been done. You want to further create even more damage? Think about appealing. Representatives from the Ministry of Agriculture and the Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO, have met with stakeholders from the agriculture and fisheries sector to discuss the operationalization of National Agriculture Management Information System. Uh, speaking at a meeting, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Nerissa Gittens Macmillan, explaining the National Agriculture Information System, said that the system is expected to document agricultural data such as the variety and volume of agricultural commodities available, and the information can be used to forecast future yields. She further outlined the needs for further improvements in data management and digitization of agricultural activity and information. An in information system that captures a lot of information. Crops, how much we have, do we have, we talk about animals, it looks at poultry, it looks at all the different areas within the ministry. It captures that data. We want to be able to utilize this information on a scientific basis because at the moment it is all captured manually. So if, for example, I want to know, does Andre have dashings growing, for example? In as much as I can tell you we have a system, that system cannot go on to uh, Andre's name and say, yes, he has it. He has three acres planted. It was grown. It, it, he started to plant in September and these would be ready in whatever time frame and this is the amount, the quantity we are expecting to get from it. In order to do that, we would have to have an officer. 
The Food and Agricultural Organization's local representative, Dr. Colleen Phillips, told the participants that the data collection is, cru is a crucial tool which farmers can use to get most, the most out of their business. We calculated over a million EC. So the first would be over a million US, this one 470,000. So there, I mean, of course, this money is not just going to the national information system, but it would support the further development to ensure that at the end of the process, at the end of the next two years, this NAMIS, in short, would be operational and accessible to you and to all other stakeholders. We're looking at um, hoteliers and, and supermarkets and customs and everybody would have easy access to agriculture data so that you can carry your processes forward and so that you can be, well, you as the farmer would be able to be guided to know hey, this particular commodity probably needs further enhancement. I could probably put in an extra acre here or there. A consultation took place on Tuesday, September 20th at the Fisheries Conference Room. Clubs and other organizations are being invited to observe Prostrate Cancer Awareness Month by joining the SVG Medical Association in its landmark tug-of-war competition at Victoria Park on Saturday, September 24th from 3.30 p.m. This as the SVG Cancer Society observes Prostrate Cancer Awareness Month in September. Several sports clubs, organizations, and other groups have registered their participation in this show of strength tugging against prostate cancer in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Trophies will be awarded to the winners of the last team standing. Prostate cancer is a significant affliction in the St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the SVG Medical Association continues to sensitize the population that the consequence of this disease is disastrous. A release from the association says in SVG each year we continue to lose several males to this potentially aggressive disease. To get ahead of this, males over the age of 50 should have early screening and to monitor the size of the prostate gland. Males who are age 40 and over with high risk factors, for example, family history, should also have screening done. Males are being encouraged to be aware of this condition, where early symptoms include difficulty with frequent or obstructed passage of urine.